Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pigs on the Run from Pig Works and p and I'm Betsy Ross, and in this edition, we are talking with Randy Rico, meteorologist for WLWT Channel 5, longtime partner of Flying Pig and Queen Bee Weekends. Randy, how are you? You know what? I'm doing all right. Very busy these times. Oh, my God. Everything started again after doing nothing for so long. All of a sudden, we're back to kids' practices and every night, and sports are back, which is great. But yeah, all of a sudden, we got really busy out of nowhere. <laughs> well, of course, usually Flying Pig and Queen Bee Weekends are busy for you. Uh, weather and runners, probably besides the course map, the second most looked at thing right. leading up to a race is the weather. So how do you as a meteorologist start looking at that forecast. I think most people start looking at the 10 day, but how far ahead do you start looking at the queen bee or flying pig weekend or really any big event? Right, so the funny thing is I'll get people who start to email me or text me or hit me up on social media asking a month or two out. You know, it's like it's like uh, in the last couple of years, people's weddings, right? Like, is it gonna rain on my kid's graduation party or for the wedding? And they'll wanna know the forecast months in advance. and. Obviously, you know, well, it's the fall, it'll probably be a little cooler. Uh, it'll be the summer, it's probably gonna be hot. But typically, I would never look past seven days. That's kind of w as far as I would look on a daily basis. But if I'm involved in an event, like the pig, or I'm going to a big event downtown or something, I'll peak a little further than seven, knowing that it's all gonna change. Um, it, yeah, I'll look like, oh, what, what's happening in 11 days? Sure, we'll take a peek anyway. Even knowing the probability of whatever the models say 10, 11, 12 days out is, you know, it's going to change a billion times, especially when you're dealing in a season like this where it's a tropical weather season. I know we don't live in Florida or the Gulf Coast or whatever, but any of those crazy storms could eventually impact our weather here. So if you're looking at anything in an extended time frame more than a week out, it all can change so many times. And I know runners are very specific because you don't want to have to grab new gear at the expo. You want new gear at the expo, but that's new gear for the next race, not the one you're running that weekend. Um, so yeah, start to plan early. Um, we'll generally be able to tell if it's going to be hot or cold. And sometimes a week out, the, the models that we look at could be completely different. And you'll look at one source and you'll say, oh, it's going to be in the 50s. Look at another source that says it's going to be in the 60s and raining. And we kind of slowly narrow down and see what's performing better over time and, and kind of can nail down that forecast to get closer and closer to race time. Is there one weekend, Flying Pig or Queen Bee weekend, that really stands out that was a challenge for you as a meteorologist trying to predict oh. what in the world's going to happen? I put so much pressure on myself, not only as the meteorologist, but as a person who has to run in these races as well. Um, I want to nail that forecast for race time. And you know that in that race, in that weekend, you've got so many different races over a span of, you know, now two and a half days. Mm -hmm. And you know whether it's going to, you want to know if it's going to be raining for the 5K, for the 10K, for the half or whatever, or, or the people who are going to be running for six plus hours on the day of the marathon. And things can change so much. Uh, I remember my, big, my biggest concern, of course, is safety. We can run in the rain. We've run in the rain. It may not be your favorite thing to run in the rain, but lightning obviously is a big problem. And I remember a couple of years ago, I don't remember, it was kind of in the early 20 teens, <laughs> sheets of rain at the starting line. And we've had a couple with lightning delays. And that's the big concern. You don't want to get the, you guys know as race officials, you don't want to get the race off. And then an hour and a half in lightning storm, you have to delay things. So I really stress out <laughs> about the forecast specifically with lightning. I feel like Temperature wise, we can deal, you know, runners are resilient. You'll be able to plan ahead for hot, for cold, for whatever, but it's it's the potential for high water or lightning that really stresses us out. So the years that we've had to deal with lightning right at the starting line, those are the years that stick out in my mind mm -hmm. as very stressful days leading up to the, to the actual race. Well, as you mentioned, you're a runner yourself. Is there a particular type of weather that you like and a particular type of weather you don't like to run. <laughs> okay, I will admit I am not a fan of running in the rain. Like a sprinkle, great. It's kind of like you're running and you go through like a neighborhood and someone's sprinkler gets you. That's great. Running in the downpour is not my favorite, but I've learned when I started running, my first pig was 
2013, I think. And I started running because my best friend bet me after my first kid. She was like, I'm you know, trying to lose the baby weight or whatever. And she was like, you can run a half. I was like, I can't run a half. She goes, you can run a half. And so I'm like, but I have to start training in January. Like, do you realize it's cold in January? And she was like, running cold weather's the best. And I thought she was insane, <laughs> but it is. I love cold weather running. Like that's my jam. January, February, March, those early training runs. I'd rather run in the cold than the heat any day. Really? Yes, I, I know, it's silly. I, I, I've done the runs in, I wanna say the coldest I've ever done was like negative five wind chill. And I oh had the little, word. you know, the mask on. So I like was running down the road like this and I've crunched through snow piles and stuff. And I just kind of like, yeah, you're, and the people who drive by think you're crazy. Cause you're like, yeah, hey, I'm <laughs> running and it's, it is way too cold outside. But I mean, well, A, you can always add more layers, right? And when you're running, you warm up anyway. Your body thinks that it's warmer. And I actually saw it on the Today Show a couple years ago. I don't remember what it was, but they said that cold weather running actually burns more calories than hot weather running. Aha. Uh -huh. So if that's your goal, that doesn't, yeah, they, they did like a study where, you know, obviously they do a lot of scientific stuff where you're in a lab and they're measuring stuff, but this was like an actual real world. Like they sent people out hiking and running in like really cold temperatures, like 15 de degrees to like 25 degrees or something like that. And then another group that was out in the fifties and the group that was out in the colder weather, same distances, same terrain, burnt way more calories because they had to fight to keep themselves warm. Mm -hmm. So bonus for yes. the cold weather. That's why I'm team cold. I prefer that. I, I've thought about, you know, I haven't run a half queen bee yet. And half of it's because my mind's like, oh, July and August, the humidity is not my favorite. So. For now, I, 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 I'm ha happy to run in the cold air. Well, that's good to know. When somebody complains about training in the cold, we'll make sure that we bring that up. <laughs> but um, as you mentioned, you've run the pig, you've run the queen bee, uh, you have run them for various charities. So I'll kind mm -hmm. of uh, do a plug for the charities that you support. Uh, the first year I ran the pig was a bet from my best friend. And after that, once I realized that I could actually like physically do this, <laughs> Once I got through that first year of training going, oh, I actually can run 11, 12, and 13 miles. I, we, My husband and I got to the finish line and I was like, all right, the next time I do this, it's gonna have to be for a reason. I'm gonna need a reason to train. So I paired up with the Leukemia Lymphoma Society for my second pig, I believe, uh, raised money for them, team and training. It's you know a well-established, great organization. Um, and that was in honor of my grandpa Rico who had passed away from leukemia when I was in elementary school. Uh, the last few years, I have actually partnered with the Alzheimer's Association as part of Team All Stars. And that is in honor of my grandpa Herring, my grandma Rico, my grandma Henderson, um, all of which have passed away due to Alzheimer's. So, I, you know, it's, it's, it's great to run for a reason. If you need motivation on a day where the weather's not the greatest or you're just tired and you don't want to do it, uh, you think about the reason that you're running and the, uh, the money raised. And you meet just really cool people through those organizations, too, if you need motivation to to run with a group. I know my schedule is weird, so I kind of always have to run by myself, but they have groups and you kind of can share your story and sometimes pass the miles just by hanging out with a group of people that are all kind of motivated by the same thing. Right, well, those are great causes. Randy, I wish you chilly temperatures, cloudy skies, <laughs> and maybe a little sprinkle here and there as you uh, I train it. for your next one. <laughs> Thank you, Betsy. All right, Randy Rico, thanks for being with us on Pigs on the Run. Mm -hmm.